This episode of Profiles in Risk is sponsored by ITC Las Vegas 2023. Insure to Connect is the largest gathering of insurance innovation in the planet, offering on parallel access to the most comprehensive and global gathering of tech entrepreneurs, investors, and insurance industry leaders in the world. This year, this scary, amazing, massive rock concert of a conference is scheduled on Halloween week, October 31st to November 2nd in Las Vegas. Learn more at thenerdsgotoitc.com and use discount code 200ITC113. Come join me, Tony Cañas, the Mad Hatter of Insurance, as I run around ITC, recording my third documentary about the event, doing magic, and having a blast. You don't want to miss this. Again, learn more at thenerdsgotoitc.com and use our discount code 200ITC113. Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Cañas, and normally, right about now, I would say the joke about switching to my radio voice, but today, because the lighting's a little weird, if you're watching this on the YouTube side, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I look li li like a saint today with a halo. Uh, so today I have with me, this is a lighting problem for, uh, in my current Airbnb in Argentina. Today I have with me Bill Haber, co-founder at, uh, co at Tech Risk. Uh, Bill, thank you for joining me today. How's it going? Good. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate being here. Everything's well. Awesome. Awesome. And it looks like you are in, in Pontevedra. Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. Yeah, so I spend a lot of time in Ponte Vedra. Um, today I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, okay. And uh, getting ready for uh, the 4th of July holidays tomorrow. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is the last discussion I'm having today before holiday starts. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So we are recording on July 3rd, 4, 10, 4 11 p.m. Eastern. So so I, I have one more podcast to get through, but, but yeah, the, I hope... Definitely. You have, you have fun plans for 4th of July? Um, going to the beach, going to do some barbecuing, just take it real easy. Excellent, excellent. Okay, awesome. So, so we, we always give the guests the chance to, to give the elevator pitch. Uh, what, what is Tech Risk? Yeah, so I appreciate the question. Look, uh, we're focused on helping insurers, and by insurers, I mean uh, independent agencies as well as the carriers and markets that they work with to better streamline the process of engaging clients in technology-oriented risk. I'm talking about cyber and other coverages that help protect organizations from a lot of the cybersecurity chaos taking place in the world today. Um, there's a lot of different markets and cyber is one of the fastest growing lines of business, but it's sometimes very unfair to ask agents to be part-time cybersecurity experts. It's certainly dangerous to assume that all the clients understand the increasingly complex questions. And what's happening is that this is resulting in confusion, misstatements, overstatement, sometimes omissions, and certainly a spike in uh, legal activity uh, based on folks not being able to bring a claim by having the answers wrong, etc. And this is just way too important of a line of coverage today to get wrong. So we build relationships with those organizations to be able to help shepherd the clients through the process, make sure that you get the most reliable information inside of insurance apps, and we streamline a lot of the processes that agents go through to make sure that they get that accurate view of what's going on client by client. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So, so I, I don't know much about cyber. Uh, most of, I, I've never worked in cyber. Most of what I know about cyber comes from, from having guests on the podcast that, 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 that work in the, sci, in the cyber side. Uh, but my, uh, a few things that, that you, that you said definitely stroke, uh, a, a, uh, uh, my curiosity or, or, or de definitely I went like, of course, not like, like, come on, of course. Uh, so no number one, yes, insurance agents are largely not cyber experts, right? We're, we're, we're talking about, about a population that, that is uh, probably mid 40s to, to early 50s, uh, yeah, right? The median insurance agent uh, and even the young ones, 
they're not computer science people. They're, 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 they don't have the, yeah. like, like, right, right? I don't know a single, uh, a single- You know, to be fair, Tony, a lot of them uh, understand the space really well um, and certainly know the insur insurance products well. Um, that's not always the biggest issue. First of all, if they're responsible for working with clients on the answers, it puts them in a little bit of an awkward situation and maybe even a risky situation. Um, we've written some articles for some magazines, including Independent Agent, uh, about the increased risk exposure that an agent faces when they're shepherding a client through this process. And, you know, what can become a, a huge errors and omissions problem. Um, you know, in short, you want to make sure that independent, objective eyes are on the process. And I think it can also be awkward for insurance professionals who work really hard on building great relationships with their insureds. And a lot of people believe in myths um, when it comes to cybersecurity. You know, oh, well, my company's different. We're not a target. Or we have all of our technology in the cloud, so you know we really don't have a risk. Or we exclusively use Macs, which are much safer than anything else. So we're we're good. You know, we hear these things constantly, and it, it can be awkward for an agent who's trying to do right by his client, um, his or her client, and need to, you know, disagree or challenge a belief that someone has. It's kind of a tricky position to be in. Um, so, you know, there's as much that we do in the business of how you engage the client and how you break the, you know, sometimes difficult news that, well, that's actually, you know, a, a, a real challenge that you guys might be facing and you need to take a, a better look at it. Okay, um, so, so it, it, it's reminding me a lot of PNC agents who walk you over to their life person after the PNC conversation. So, so help me visualize what it looks like. Okay, so, 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 so my agent is doing uh, the, the, the insurance for my little recruiting firm uh, or for insurance nerds for the podcast side. And, and okay, so this is the coverage you need for, for, for GL, for professional liability, for whatever. You should have hired no known. How, how, what, what, what does the cyber conversation look like if they're working with, with tech risk? Sure. Well, typically we'll start with, you know, a short introductory discussion and we're able to use things like cybersecurity scans to identify if there's any really blatant, obvious issues that look problematic um, to uh, have that conversation. But we'll also typically, you know, have a, a short discussion about the industry they're in, um, the locations that they are in, where they do business and look at things like, um, you know, their obligations from a regulatory standpoint. And we will typically recommend that they undertake a cyber risk assessment. This is the same way that the cybersecurity industry engages their clients. And this is an opportunity for us to sit down in a more structured conversation and drive through a process to best understand how they use technology not just what they have in, in, in their security stack or which software tools they use, but really what their strategy is, where they're going, you know, what their present and future look like, uh, and learn how they communicate with each other and with clients, how they protect data. And that can take as little as a half an hour on a face-to-face -face call over Zoom, and it's very convenient. Um, when we're done with that, we can not only paint the picture of where this client has risk, where they're doing an adequate job protecting themselves, and where there are some gaps. But we'll make some recommendations for other things they might do. Sometimes they're very simple things that they can do in, in minutes. Sometimes they uh, require deploying solutions. Um, these days, if, if you're not uh, buttoning up multi-factor authentication everywhere or using um, EDR, which is endpoint detection and response, you may not get any carriers who want to insure the client. So we can deploy those things as well. We actually will help deploy any missing tools that are going to be necessary for them. 
and then we'll help them package up the submission because all of that data we've captured, we can use to reliably populate applications that reflect what cybersecurity experts see rather than the customer's best guess or a lot of the things that normally take place behind the scenes when people are filling out cyber apps. Okay, and, and, and my understanding is, is that cyber apps are um, long and com more, more complicated by, by, by the quarter kind of thing. Uh, yeah, they're, they're changing a lot for sure and they're getting more complex. Do you hear a noise? I'm hearing like a buzzing. Hmm, hold on. There it is. Huh, so when I muted myself, it went away. Is it back now? No, it sounds good now. Okay, so, so if it comes back, I'll keep muting myself. Okay. Weird. Okay, um, thank you. So to, to address what you just said, look, the cyber apps change frequently and now, we know what the underwriters are, are doing. They're trying to stay ahead of what they see or their you know, biggest area of, of loss. And they're learning constantly because the market's frequently changing. I mean, we see a lot more risks being targeted for small and medium-sized businesses who don't have the proper controls in place. And they're easier to steal from. Um, so they're constantly providing you know, new questions that are a little more complicated. And it's no wonder that it escapes the agents and the clients many times and they're grasping at, you know, what, what are they looking for when they're asking for, uh, you know, uh, DLP? And maybe the client's saying, I think that means, you know, we're using some uh, Bitdefender Microsoft tools. We use that and, okay, let's get that on the app you know, talking past what the underwriters are looking for. So having a good understanding what the underwriters are looking for and an ability to kind of sift through what the clients are, are talking about and make sure that they're focused on getting the specific answer um, that's gonna be necessary. So rather than just follow any app, we do a proper cyber risk assessment. We capture the data and then we're able to populate all the downstream market applications properly with the most accurate responses. So very, very, very interesting. Uh, I totally understand the need for it. What I, what I find really, really interesting is this sounds like, like, like a lot of like human handholding. What I, what I mean is I've had a, uh, other cyber options co come on the show and usually they are some sort of automation Right, we'll we'll do the assessment. We'll do this. We'll do that. But it's very automated. It, you're, you're making it sound like, like a human will work with me as the agent in getting this this done. Is is that accurate? Or how does it work? Bingo, Tony. And we don't trust AI to do this. Uh, we don't believe that um, machines can discover this guarded sensitive information in any reliable way, and that we're actually a long way away from that. That doesn't mean that we don't have um, ambitions in the future to be able to streamline a lot more of what we do in small ways using machine learning and things like that. However, not unlike the art and science of underwriting, uh, diagnosing cyber risk takes trained human intervention and you know, people are not, rightfully so, keeping their uh, security methods out in public places that can easily be discovered. A lot of the scanning technology that's used to discover risk today is sometimes referred to as outside in technographic uh, data. And we're really an inside out data capture company. We look under the hood, we identify how things are running and where there are problems and we'll recommend solutions in kind of like a cyber wellness checkup to make sure things run smooth. And when they do run smooth, they'll be able to market accounts broadly, get a lot of quotes, satisfy the needs of underwriters, and better yet, take good care of their company and know that if they have to bring a claim in the future, what they're doing is accurately captured so they'll be able to bring a claim if that's what has to happen. 
what 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 what's the pricing model like? It it just it 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 sounds like a very expensive way to do it. So so what what how, 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 well, how, we, how, try and, we try and make it, uh, you know, we've thought through this carefully and we try and make it as digestible as possible. And in fact, there's a lot of things that clients can do to uh, use our solutions and services free. A anybody can come to the TechRisk platform. We have a quick start program and we have short focused introductory conversations and scans that we'll offer free uh, to any agent who wants to have a conversation with their client. Um, if we do end up recommending a risk assessment, um, they're as little as 30 minutes and they can cost a few hundred dollars and be added as a broker fee, although we encourage clients to pay for these um, and there's some good reasons for that. You know, it's a lot of the compliance organizations are starting to require companies of all sizes have a periodic risk assessment, like an annual risk assessment and show proof that they're acting on the recommendations. Um, and our process ticks that box. Um, but for, you know, a few hundred bucks, not unlike a wellness visit to a doctor, you can get a checkup. You can understand where you, where you stand and where you have gaps. You can address them proactively and then market yourself for insurance. And we make it all very fast, easy, and affordable. Okay. Okay. That, that, yeah, this, this sounds, uh, like a completely different approach, and and it's very, 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 very interesting. So, uh, before we start recording, you you, you mentioned uh, Weston Labs, uh, the the uh, and you might be the first guest that I have uh, from awesome. from that accelerator. So so basically, if I understand correctly, Weston Labs is is a new accelerator focused on the broker side, uh, funded by some very respected agents and brokers. Chris Paradiso and and kind of his, uh, I think I, I think of them as as his group, but I don't I don't know if, like it could be David Carruthers' group, right? There's there several of them that are, that are big names. Yeah, uh, there's actually a lot of others. Uh, Jeff Roy uh, from Canada's in it. Um, there's but they also have the backing of uh, several independent uh, agent organ state agent organizations. You know, all part of the big eye and. Um, Trusted Choice has helped to fund a lot of it, and there's a handful of companies that are involved in it. What they've really done is said, you know, InsureTech uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, came and said, you know, in, in 10 or 15 years, there will be no independent agents and insurance will be bought. <laughs> and uh, that put them all on the defensive. What they've seen is that hasn't been the case that the independent agent channel has grown in that time and is an indispensable force that insure techs need to work really well with to help the industry succeed. And so what they've done is looked for a handful of companies that have really promising solutions that are built around fortifying the independent agencies. And they're helping us learn different ways that we can better align ourselves, better meet the needs, and the desires of the independent agencies and, and how we can use changes to our pricing model and our marketing approach to best fit into those organizations. So we've got eight in this uh, inaugural cohort and it's fantastic. And uh, we just started it uh, three weeks ago, I think. And you know, we're meeting, I had a meeting earlier today with the group and uh, it's fantastic. They're, they're doing a great job. And uh, TechRisk uh, started, uh, according to your LinkedIn, a little over two years ago. So yeah. just over two years ago, we founded the company uh, and we built a prototype platform to automate a lot of the things that we do behind the scenes. Uh, and we started reaching out to uh, different insurance organizations and building relationships, showing them our approach, fine tuning it a little bit. Um, and we're still doing that. In fact, what we do is an evolution. The industry is, is constantly changing. But we think that there's a really strong need in the cyberspace to be able to help agents get this right and help them to deliver a better service to their client and make sure they're protected and that the value of the insurance that they buy is really high because 
they're taking good care of themselves and using insurance the way it should be used, uh, you know, to come to the rescue in the event of an emergency. Okay. H have you guys gone through, through any other accelerator prior or is it the first accelerator? So we did go through a cybersecurity accelerator. We went through the Tampa Bay wave, which they have a cyber tech X program and a lot of very successful cybersecurity programs have been through that. Um, so we learned a whole lot from the cybersecurity side about best ways to, um, you know, build our business and fit into some of the other uh, cybersecurity technology solutions. And we, in fact, do business with several different companies that we met through that, and even ones who went through the program this year, um, who we've met. There's a really great, innovative uh, solution for enterprise encryption that, that we're working with that we've met from this year. But I mean, we work with a number of different cybersecurity solutions that are appropriate to different kinds of businesses. And so we really look at this as a one by one, client by client um, process that's important to get right and do a really good job. And we're building ways to scale this business faster and more efficiently. Um, but we think that there's nothing that does the job better than being a, able to engage the insureds face to face in human discussions where we make sure that everybody understands each other and everybody's clear and um, so far it's working very well. Fantastic. Um, so it, for the listeners who are agents, brokers, etc., who uh, would love to try this out, how, how do we engage? How, how do we... How, how do I get you on my team? <laughs> sure. Listen, we'd love to talk with everybody who is interested in this. Um, our website is techrisk.com, which is spelled T-E-K-R-I-S-Q.com. And we actually have a quick start page um, where they can put in their information and we can schedule a conversation. And it's T-E-K-R-I-S-Q.com forward slash uh, Q-U- I-K-S-T-A-R-T. And that's the best way um, that they can schedule a time to chat with us. But I'd be happy to take an email from anybody who might be interested in talking further. Um, my name, BH, I use the um, initials uh, BH at techrisk.com. You can send me an email and I'll get right back to you. You know, Tony, there's one thing that um, I'd like to mention for carriers who might be listening. Um, part of our process is really interesting for the underwriters who struggle to identify the best risks. And what's key to them is the most reliable data. And they love this inside out technographic data um, and understanding what's the cybersecurity culture inside of a company. You know, are they driving training and learning from it? Are they doing proactive things from training and fishing to um, rewarding employees doing the right things and, you know, maybe even putting the people who are problematic in the penalty box once in a while? Um, and so we came out with an endorsement recently, the first ever endorsement of its kind, um, where we are certifying controls. So let's say, for example, that a client um, is managing a lot of sensitive data and our recommendation is that they use endpoint detection and response tools, which a lot of carriers require these days. We can not only recommend that and we can deploy that for the client, but we can certify once it's all been installed and it's installed across 100% of the employee's machines that it is in fact in place and monitor that throughout the year to make sure that any gaps or any um, uh, lapses are captured and remediated quickly. Uh, and that brings a lot of peace of mind to underwriters. And we've just done an endorsement that uh, rewards the agents as well as the insureds with premium credits when they do the right things. So <clears throat> imagine offering an insurance policy to a company and saying, hey, as you get better at cybersecurity, we'll lower your premiums. And here are the targets and work with tech risk and they'll get you there. That's fantastic. 
what, what, what's, what's the origin story? How, how, how did you figure out this was a need uh, and, and get on the path to, 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 to offering this? Well, you know, w when you spend all of your time looking at the way the industry is <clears throat> working to resolve these problems and growing, you come to the conclusion that collaboration is key. And in some ways, in recent years as this market has hardened, uh, agencies and carriers can kind of almost be on different pages or working at odds and, and not collaborating with each other perfectly. And we observed that wouldn't it be great just to, you know, put independent eyes on the process, call out what the true nature of the risk is and reward folks for moving forward with the right steps. And when agents can help their clients to do that, because a lot of agents, they have great relationships with these folks. They're trusted. And if they paint the picture the right way with our assistance, it resonates with small and medium-sized businesses. Most of the executives, they want to do the right thing. They may not have in-house IT or chief information security officers, but they do want to avoid risk and protect their clients. And so if there's a simple, easy, and affordable way to do that, they'll do that. And if there's insurance incentive to get better at it, guess what? They're happy to, to do that. And that's really how you build a positive cybersecurity culture inside of a company. So we, we, we worked with a carrier that we've gotten close to and an agency and together we started collaborating on that and we're expecting, you know, in the coming uh, months and years to build more and more endorsements for our process because we think this is the future of the way that you engage insureds in this discussion. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I've got to agree. It, it sounds like, like a different approach that passes the smell test for me. Uh, it, it makes hey. sense. Again, I, I'm not a cyber expert. I've never been an agent, uh, but cyber is a challenging line. I hear that every day, basically. Uh, capacity has dried up a lot. Uh, the expectations from the from the carriers, when it comes to, to the security measures, are higher than they've ever been. Uh, yeah. This is not this risk is not going away. <laughs> it's only you know, it, it's only getting uh, it's only becoming more and more important to get it right. And and every business has cyber risks. They do. That chances are. Uh, are currently not being addressed properly for the small business market. So, so uh, fantastic! Uh, thank you for coming to the show. I, I look forward to 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 hear how things go as as you guys go through the program, and and uh, uh, hopefully uh, I'll have you back in a year or two to, to, to talk about all the all the success that you guys have had. Uh, that would be any, awesome. uh, so we're recording in July, so the spring conference season is over. Uh, but any any conferences where we might be able to run into 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 you and your team in, in the fall? Yeah, so um, there's a couple of things that aren't yet uh, confirmed, but um, uh, we're thinking about doing a group um, uh, with the 101 Weston Labs, a group of solution providers um, together at a couple of events in fall. We'll be announcing them as they're confirmed, um, but. Uh, you know, we certainly participate regularly in events like uh, Net Diligence and the Professional Liability Underwriting Society, uh, cyber symposiums and things like that. Um, we also are um, active with the Big Eye and the Agents Council for Technology. So um, we're, gonna, we're planning on doing a lot more state-specific events um, in the fall. So uh, events like that, we, we post on our website. So if you go to techrisk.com and you look at uh, events, um, we'll, we'll put all of that there. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for your, for your time today. You bet. Uh, hey, Tony, great to meet you. And uh, I hope you enjoy your time in Buenos Aires. I am having a blast. <laughs> thank you. You bet. Take care.